welcome back for our next panel discussion and I'm joined now by MEP for Midlands North West, McCarthy, Sinn Féin MEP McCarthy and Henry O'Donnell from the INHFA. Thank you both for popping into us. Um, I suppose attention is going to start turning now to the shape of the next common agricultural policy. Uh, there's been a lot of changes over in Brussels um, over the last couple of months. Um, a new commissioner for agriculture has now been appointed. The CAP proposals, I suppose, that farmers here are familiar with are the proposals that were put forward under Commissioner Hogan. Um, what will happen to the, to the proposal that's there now at the moment, Matt? Is there a possibility that that could change? Could it be scrapped? What will happen under a new Commissioner for Agriculture? Well, first of all, Claire, thanks for having me on. I've been following your coverage in Strasbourg over the past couple of days, so um, it's good to get an opportunity to join you today. So the, the CAP proposals from the Commission are as they stand. What happens at a European level is that the Commission make a proposition in relation to uh, reform of this nature. It then goes to the Parliament and the Council. So the Agri Committee within Parliament has agreed to a number of amendments to that. There will be a bit of reopening of that. What is likely to happen is that the full Parliament will um, allow the Agri Committee to reopen. But the prospect of any huge divergence at, at this stage from the Parliament's position in relation to CAP is slim, although it, it is a, an option that's possible. Um, and at the same time, it has to be the same process has to be undertaken at the council level. Now, the council level have effectively stalled the negotiations because they are waiting to see what the conclusion of the budget will be. And this is where it's really important because there's two elements of CAP that are really important. One is, of course, the distribution of the CAP budget. And that's a big debate that Henry will probably go in in terms of what we need at an Irish level. But first of all, we need to agree what the budget itself is. And this is um, one of the legacies that Phil Hogan has left us, is that he has agreed to a budget that would actually see in real terms a 15% cut to the cap budget, which to me is absolutely unacceptable to suggest that we would actually have a reduced cap budget while Ireland pays increased contributions into that EU budget in order to fund European military um, agendas and centralisation military command. So that's something that we need to knock on the head. Um, from our point of view, what we want to have is a protected budget that sees a cap increase in budget, recognising the increased needs that we needed to deliver, and within that, a more effective and fairer distribution of how those monies are targeted to young farmers, to farmers who have been historically on lower payments, um, and to those sectors which are particularly vulnerable in the time ahead. Um, Henry, yourself and the INHFA, what priorities have you outlined for the next cap? budget in order to, to suit your, your membership? Well, I suppose our first priority in the short term is to start to generate the debate again on the next cap. It has been very, very quiet. There's huge issues coming down the road at farmers and there hasn't been a debate or a discussion around it. So that's our first objective is to get that debate started. Uh, the second objective then is what's actually going to happen in the next cap. Uh, our organisation was basically founded on the issues and the problems with the last cap. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been so poorly thought out and so poorly distributed among the farming community. So our priorities, uh, well, we would like to see a full budget for it, uh, like every other farm organisation, but we're very adamant that the huge issue going forward is the distribution of that budget among farmers. That we're one of the few EU countries at this stage that don't have full convergence of payments and we feel that that's wrong. What we have is a system where a farmer's basic payment is based on the activity on that farm 20 years ago. Uh, we feel that's nonsense and we really need to work hard to get rid of that, to balance out payments so that all active farmers get the same payment per hectare. And, uh, we really need clarity on that. Uh, now, some of our, our political parties Fine Gael has actually said that they don't favour convergence, which is amazing when you consider that convergence would be benefit probably 65 to 70% of the agricultural community. 
Um, now, the other political parties uh, have been very unclear on their policies. I, I have to say, and I have to credit Matt and his party, that they have been clear that they want convergence as well. So our biggest plank is that we want convergence in the next cap, and we don't want to see what happened the last time where we had a Romanian Commissioner for Agriculture proposing convergence for Irish farmers, and our own authorities actually managed to overturn that, and, and 70 percent of farmers in Ireland lost out because of that. It's actually incredible and we want to get that message out there. So that's the key thing for, for INHFA for the next two years now. What is the likelihood of full convergence, Matt? Um, I, I believe it's 70 percent um, has been discussed at the moment. Um, Dan, is, are we looking at 100 percent convergence in the not so distant future? Yes, um, as Henry said, that's the model that has been basically um, adopted um, across uh, um, across most member states of the EU. That is the position of the Agri Committee. The, by the narrowest of margins, it has to be said, but the Agri Committee within the European Parliament adopted a position of full com convergence. And the reason for that is because at the core of CAP and how it is currently distributed is an inherent unfairness. We have a situation whereby payments are based on activities that took place 20 odd years ago. I last year hosted a delegation of young farmers from the agricultural colleges to the European Parliament and to meet the institutions. Some of the people who were on that delegation who are farming today weren't alive when the entitlements were set on their farm. So a lot of talk about um, you know, simplification of the process. In my view, the most simple process that you could have, and the fairest process, is that you have a definition for active farmer, you have a definition for eligible farm, uh, and, and for uh, eligible land, and anybody who meets those um, criteria gets a payment based on the fact that they're, that they're, um, that they're farming. Um, and I, there is the capacity within the budget and with a little bit of imagination and with a little bit of political will to have a situation whereby every farmer would receive somewhere in the region of €400 Euro a hectare for the, for the first 30 hectares and €250 Euro per hectare after that. That to me would be a very fair, simple system that would allow young farmers and everybody else to enter farming if they want and it would allow, um, in my view, a situation to to be that the cap returns to what it's supposed to be, which is actually a payment for a service being carried out by farmers on behalf of the rest of um, society. And it would get, and in order for that to happen, of course, we would have to have an upper payment limit of around €60,000 to allow that redistribution. But you can't have the situation whereby companies in the name of Larry Goodman are drawing down almost a half a million euro in farm payments when most of the farmers who I represent are actually on payments of less than five or six thousand per annum. That is morally unjustifiable and we need to take the imaginative steps to ensure that we have that redistribution. Um, another key issue is the actual definition of a genuine farmer. Um, so this is going to be, Ireland will have to come up with its own definition of a genuine farmer in order to draw down the payments. Um, what kind of definition is the INHFA putting out there, do you think should be put out there as part of Ireland's? Well, we already have some definitions there and farmers are aware that for to qualify for their ANC payment, they have to have a minimum stocking rate. That definition has been there for years. That's actually going to suffice for a lot of farmers, but it has to be related to the current activity on the farm. The, the basic payment was never meant as a pension scheme for farmers and we, we really have to break that link with the historic system and the activity on the farm is pretty obvious in that there's some outputs from the farm. Uh, we feel that there has to be some criteria set in place that the output historically has always been animals or crop or grain. Like we, we need to get into our heads that there's farmers have an output of a public good where they're managing the land for the environment, for climate change, uh, for carbon sequestration, for protection of peatlands. Uh, we, we really need to open it up, that our, our definition of a farming activity, because uh, our EU payments are less and less based on providing food. They're based on providing environmental and public goods, and, and, and that's where the focus needs to lie. And there's been a lot of talk about productive farmers need to be protected. Well, that, that's a fallacy. There's farmers there on huge payments that are doing absolutely nothing. They, they may actually have somebody else farming the land on their behalf. So productive is something that we need to redefine. 
Um, I'm almost out of time, and I just before we finish up, um, Matt, just on Mercosur, you're out there in Brussels. Um, can you tell us the latest on what's happening there? Because another parliament has come out to, 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 to reject um, the Mercosur deal. Yeah, to me, this is a significant development because the members of the Austrian parliament have today instructed their government to reject the Mercosur deal. They become the second parliament to do so. The Irish parliament, through the Dáil um, and through the Sinn Féin private members' motion before the summer, has also instructed our government to do so. The fact that this has now um, been agreed by the European Commissioner with response for trade to be what's called a mixed association agreement. That means that it will require unanimity in order to be adopted. That means that our government can now stop Mercosur. And I think that the very least, when you consider the protests that we've had um, over the summer, when you consider the fears that people have around Brexit, when you consider the damage and the potential damage to the cap budget, all of those things combined, I think the very, very least that our farmers, and particularly our beef farmers, can expect of our government is an absolutely clear and unequivocal declaration that they reject Mercosur. In doing so, they will kill this um, deal dead, and the actions of the Austrian parliament today confirms to me that if our Irish government um, have the, um, the um, wherewithal and have the guts to actually adhere to that Dáil motion, that others will follow suit. So it's time for Leo and Michael Creed and all the Fine Gael representatives and the Fine Fáil representatives who are keeping them in government, who are walking around the Plough and Championship today, to actually say it unequivocally, we can kill Mercosur, and it's the very least that our beef farmers deserve that we, they would make that statement of intent. OK, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much for joining us. And we'll be back in the tent here very soon. But first, it's back out around the site.